So how well do you actually understand how to multiply numbers that involve a sum or difference and a square root, something like this situation right here? Well, if you're pretty good with working with sums and differences of square roots and multiplication, this should be a very easy problem to figure out without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. So we have uh, parentheses, 4 plus the square root of 12 squared. All right, now this is a multiple choice question. Let's take a look at our answers. So A is 4 over the square root of 3. B is the square root of 3 over 4. C is 48 times the square root of 6. And D is 28 plus 16 times the square root of 3. All right, so once again, no calculators, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step-by-step step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take a look at this problem one more time. So what we have is a square, right? So we have this thing right here and we wanna square it. So that's gonna involve multiplication. If we have three squared, this means what? Three times three. So this thing squared, uh, and this is a bit of a hint, what we need to do is take this and multiply it by itself. All right, so that's what you need to do. And let's take a look at the right answer. The correct answer here is D, 28 plus 16 times the square root of three. But uh, if you got this right, that is fantastic. If you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally lost. Can you help me out? I definitely can. And uh, let's suppose you run across this problem on a test and you don't know what to do. What should you do? Well, if you're saying, I know what I'm going to do, I am going to take a guess. Well, that's the exact right thing to do. There is one thing that math teachers hate to see, and that is uh, math questions that are blank. Never, ever, ever turn in a test or quiz without you know trying, even if you're just writing down some ridiculous things. Now, don't write something down, and I'm pretty sure some of you have done this because I've graded maybe like 10 million tests through my years. Well, I don't know about that. But, uh, you know, don't write something like this down, like problem number three, um, I don't get it, or, you know, number four, uh, if my teacher was better, uh, I would, you know, be able to answer. <laughs> now, I know some of you may be tempted to write things like that on your exam, but, you know, try to, you know, come up with anything, but on a multiple choice question, there's no excuses, always take a guess. So this looks pretty good. Unfortunately, it's wrong. And if this wasn't a multiple choice question, well, we have no alternative but to just know the math. All right, so what we want to do, though, is recognize that we are dealing with a binomial. Okay, so in other words, we can think of this as like A plus B squared. All right, so let's quickly review some basic algebra, and uh, let's see how well you know how to multiply binomials. So what if I gave you like A plus, well, let's do it this way. Um, no, we'll do it A plus 2. All right, this is pretty good. A plus 2 times A plus 5, right? So here is a binomial times a binomial, right? So this is how we would describe such uh, an expression in algebra. So there's a couple different ways you can approach this problem, but the most famous way uh, is to use something called the FOIL method. Now, I say famous because most students, when they learn how to multiply uh, binomials, they think of the FOIL method. Now, let's uh, kind of um, just do a quick review before I show you this problem. So bef uh, before we get into two uh, binomial times a binomial, what if we had a monomial? Now, monomial is just a thing all by itself, and we're multiplying by a binomial, something like this. Well, this right here, we would not use the FOIL method. This is just a straight distributive property situation. We just go A times A, that's A squared, and then A times 5 is 5A. That's the right answer. So this is what we call the distributive property. Now, if you know the distributive property, you really don't even need to know FOIL because FOIL, you know, I like that uh, acronym. I'm going to use it in this problem. But uh, really, FOIL is a special case scenario just for binomials. But what if we had like 
uh, a plus 2 times uh, a squared minus 3a plus 5. But now we have a binomial times a trinomial. We can't use FOIL here either, okay? But what you can do for all these methods is to use the distributive property, all right? As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you um, how to think of, um, we'll, we'll, we'll cover the distributive property uh, situation here uh, first with uh, multiplying binomials, and then we'll get, uh, use FOIL because yeah, it's still a great little acronym to use. All right, so here is how you can multiply anything, whether you have a monomial or a uh, two binomials or a binomial times a triangle, doesn't make a difference. Here is how you can always multiply expressions uh, that are, involve sums and differences in algebra. All right, so you just uh, start with your first term. Okay, you start with the first term to the uh, left. All right, so we're going to focus on this expression, and we're going to kind of uh, just uh, forget about this right here. Okay, we're going to think of this almost like a distributive property situation. So we're going to go, all right, a times a, which is what? a squared, and then we'll go a times 5, which is plus 5a. All right, so we took this a, we multiplied it by everything over here, and now once we finish with this, we got to scoot over to the next thing. So that is 2. So we're going to go 2 times a, that's plus 2a, and then 2 times this 5 is uh, plus uh, 10, positive 10. And now we could just uh, combine like terms. So we have what? a squared plus 5a and 2a is 7a plus 10. That is the answer. All right, so the advantage of doing this is if we had a trinomial, let me go ahead and uh, fix this up real quick here. So if I had a squared plus 2a plus 7, I would just continue to go on like so and so and so and, and, and just keep going like, uh, you know, with what how many uh, terms I have, all right? So I'm kind of rushing through on this particular method, but let's go ahead and see the FOIL method in action right now, all right? So here is our problem. We know the correct answer is a squared plus 7a plus 10, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the FOIL method, F-O- F-O-I-L. All right, so F stands for first, uh, O stands for outer, I stands for inner, and L stands for last. First, outer, inner, last. So it's going to be A times A. This is our first terms of these um, uh, binomials, right? So this is the first term here. This is the first term here. So A times A is A squared. All right, so uh, that's F. The O is the outer terms. So what are the outer terms? Well, this is the outer terms here and here, the most outer terms of uh, this expression. So a times 5, that's what we're going to multiply. So that's plus 5a. Now we go to i, or the, uh, which is the inner term. So these are the inner terms right here. So this is plus 2a. And then l is, stands for the last terms. So this and this are the last terms. So we got uh, 2 times 5 is 10. And then we clean this up and we get back to this. All right, so that is the FOIL method. And you have to understand how to multiply binomials, either using the FOIL technique or just the distributive property uh, technique. But uh, let's go ahead and apply this here because we do have a lovely bin uh, binomial. Okay, this is a binomial. It doesn't have to be uh, variables. These are two different things. All right, so again, we have four. We kind of think of this as our A, and then plus we have a number. But we're squaring this, so in other words, we're going to have to multiply this by itself. So let's use the FOIL technique. Okay, so here's the situation. We got 4 plus the square root of 12 times 4 plus the square root of 12, and we're going to just use the FOIL method. And you can see here, I already kind of mapped it out for us. So uh, we just have to be careful when we use this method. All right, so we're going to get uh, 4 times 4. We'll get the answer to that. And then the outer is 4 times uh, the square root of 12. We're going to do that. And then inner, 4 times the square root of 12. And then uh, the last is going to be square root of 12 times the square root of 12. So if you want to pause the video and see if you can do this on your own, that is fantastic. But uh, let's go ahead and do the work right now. All right, so we uh, start off with our first. So that's going to be 4 times 4. That's 16. And then our outer is 4 times the square root of 12. That's 4 square root of 12. Our inner is also 4 times the square root of 12, so that's 4 square root of 12. And then the last is the square root of 12 times the square root of 12, which is the square root of 144. Remember, when you multiply square roots, you multiply uh, the inside numbers, right, under one big square root. So the square root of 3 times 2 is the square root of 6. All right, but uh, we can clean this up because we have some like terms here. So we have a square root of 12 and square root of 12, so uh, we have... 4 square root of 12s over here and 4 square root of 12s over here. So in total, we have 8 square root of 12s. 
And we also know that the square root of 144 is 12, all right? So that's a, a lovely, um, perfect square. Perfect squares are numbers like 4, 9, 25, and 144. Okay, so when we take the square roots of these numbers, we get lovely uh, whole numbers. All right, so we're uh, almost there. We still have some uh, work to go, but we now are down to 16 plus 8 squared to 12 plus 12. And here we have 16 and 12, so we can add those together. So it uh, looks like we are done 28 plus uh, 8 squared to 12. Now, some of you may have uh, gotten this answer, and you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know, you know, I did this right. I am an expert in algebra. Uh, the answer should be this. I don't understand your answer. Well, this is good. Okay, matter of fact, if you gave this to me on a test, I might give you like a B plus, maybe an A minus, depending on how I'm feeling that day. But we're not done here because we got to fix this thing up. We cannot leave uh, uh, um, square roots that need, that can be simplified unsimplified, all right? So what am I talking about? Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can, but the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. Now let's finish up this problem. So we're, we're almost there. But uh, here uh, we have 28 plus 8 times the square root of 12. Well, anytime you are dealing with a problem that involves a radical or a square root, you always got to ask yourself, is this thing uh, simplified, right? So, for example, if we had a fraction 10 over 30, would you turn that into your teacher? Well, you could turn that answer into your teacher, but they would not uh, you know, be uh, happy about that. They'd be like, hey, uh, why don't you just reduce this fraction down to one third? Okay, so in mathematics, uh, simplifying a value or an expression is not really like an optional thing. Okay, you need to do it, all right? So uh, don't think like, ah, I, don't, I don't really care, uh, you know, Mr. Teacher. I'm going to leave my answer just like this so you can, you know, uh, you know, uh, just take a lot of time to decipher what I'm saying. So if I got 10,000 over 20,000, you know, I'm going to be upset about that. I'm like, hey, listen, just tell me one half because I don't have time to read all these zeros, right? So again, simplification is not like an optional thing. You've got to fully simplify. And when it comes to square roots, you need to be on the lookout for perfect squared factors, all right? So this is a whole separate topic, but basically a perfect square, again, I mentioned this, are numbers like this, okay, and even 144. It's numbers such that when we take the square root of these numbers, we end up with lovely uh, whole numbers, right? Nice integer values like uh, uh, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, uh, 25, the square root of 25 is 5, and so forth. But these numbers here, 4, 9, 25, 144, uh, 36, these are called perfect squares. And what we're looking for is to see if the value underneath the square root has any uh, perfect square factors. In other words, can we break up this number such that it contains a perfect square? And here we can, right? Because the square root of 12 is equal to 4 times the square root of 3. We don't really care about 6 times uh, 2, all right? That is also the square root of 12. But uh, this does not really help us out because 6 is not a perfect square and 2 is not a perfect square. So we don't want to think of it this way. We want to think of it this way. The square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times 3 because we have a lovely perfect square factor. All right, so now we can take and break up this big square root. This is another property of square roots. So we have one big square root, the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Well, you can write this as the individual uh, product of these factors, right? So the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 3. But uh, the reason why we're doing that is because we can take the square root of 4. We know what that is. That is 2. So we have 2 times the square root of 3. So the square root of 12 is really 2 times the square root of 3. That's the simplest way to express the square root of 12. All right, so what we're going to do is replace the square root of 12 with 2 times the square root of 3 and finish up this math. So now we have 
eight times two times the square root of three. So to do this multiplication, we just go eight times two. That's 16 times the square root of three, but we can't forget our 28. So we have 28 plus 16 times the square root of three, and we are done. All right, so hopefully this video was informative. And, uh, you know, again, I know I do a lot of rambling over here. You know, one of the things that I like to do on my YouTube channel is teach in my own style, right? I'm like, this is my own classroom. I can kind of teach the way I want. And I try to kind of, you know, I try to uh, keep things lighthearted. I know I kind of ramble, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, I do try to deliver a lot of, um, you know, value and share with you you know, through decades of experience, what's really important in terms of being successful in math. And that really comes down to your mindset, right? Things are going to get tough. If things are easy for you, well, just continue to take more math courses and eventually going to run into something that you're going to be like, I don't understand what's going on. Well, that's when you get tested, right? So you never, ever give up and make sure you get help, okay? Whether it's one of my courses or another YouTube video, whatever the case is, get the help you need so you can be successful in mathematics. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.